You can support your local non-league club or buy a mystery box by checking out the nonleaguefootballshop.co.uk and upon checkout, make sure you use the promo code RDFTACTICS10 for a 10% discount. Hello and welcome back to the RDF Tactics YouTube channel and today's video we are going to be looking at Antonio Conte's Inter Milan side we have the Football Manager 2021 tactic, the training schedules and then we're going to check the results but first off we are going to get into the analysts Antonio Conte's Inter Milan side are currently sitting on top of the Serie A and 9 points ahead with just 11 games to go they are also on red hot form, winning their last 7 Serie A games whilst keeping 4 clean sheets and throughout this season, Conte has used his trusted 3 at the back system. 3 at the back has served Conte very well as a manager, winning 4 league titles, 3 Serie A's with Juventus and a Premier League title with Chelsea. At Inter, the back 3 are ever present and consistent which gives them the base to be defensively solid. Bastoni has started 24 out of the 27 games so far. De Fry has 25 appearances and Skrinra has 22 starts. The right wing back position has been Hakimi's spot whilst the left wing back position has been rotated more often. Hakimi is an intelligent fullback who loves to get further forward and has good decision making, often timing his forward runs excellently. Ivan Perisic and Ashley Young have been on rotation on the left flank but whoever is playing as the wing backs they are expected to stay wide and offer width as they are the only wide players in this system. Importantly, much of Conte's principles of play and success this season has been the midfield triangle of Brozovic the playmaker, Vidal the ball winner and Barella the number 8. In this, Brozovic's positional awareness and ability on the ball has been used to allow Barella to drive forward, take up dangerous positions and create chances and it also allows Vidal to leave his position to close down. This is the key reason why the formation Conte has deployed so far this season should be thought of as more of a 3-1-4-2 rather than a 3-5-2, particularly due to how low Brozovic drops during build-up phases. Up front, Martinez and aerial threat Romelu Lukaku have combined wonderfully well as a front two. They've carried much of the goal threat contributing to a combined 33 goals that's 51% of Inter Milan's goals scored so far in the Serie A. Lukaku also has 8 assists to his name and that highlights how important he is to the side but we are now going to talk about how Inter build up. Conte's methodology of playing out from the back with Inter has for the most part remained consistent. They have mostly maintained a coordinated sequence of patterns when playing out from the back. Inter's main method of ball progression is using layoffs, they do this all over the pitch. This helps disorganise the opponent's shape but also allows players to find space in order to collect the ball so the team can progress collectively. In build up phases, the back three will often circulate the ball left to right or right to left looking for opportunities to play in the two central midfielders. If nothing is on for the central midfielders in possession, they will look to play in Brozovic who will circulate and try again often switching to a wing back or outside centre back. The centre backs typically stretch the pitch very wide, creating space for Brozovic should an opposition striker choose to press them. Brozovic becomes key whenever he can get on the ball and his first look is often either to the outside centre backs to create space in wide areas and beat the press or to the wing backs who often hug the touchline. Vidal and Barella more frequently get involved higher up the pitch and their vertical passes forward to a striker are often matched with the striker playing it back to the wing back in an attempt to circulate the ball again. As the case when playing out from the back, Inter's passes are short, crisp and often require much off the ball movement. It's also key for a striker, most likely Lukaku, to drop deep and will often play a one touch backwards pass to a wing back or to the original passer of the ball and then look to create space again higher up the field. This is made possible with the front two system, allowing Conte's side to consistently have an outlet up front even if a forward drop deep to pick up possession. This has made Inter a very efficient side, capable of maintaining possession for large periods of time. Occasionally, they can play the more direct ball as Lukaku and Martinez both can thrive off this. But how do Inter work when they are off the ball? Inter choose to press as high as they possibly can on goal kicks and the two strikers will stick themselves perpendicular to the two centre-backs, waiting just outside the 18-yard box, which they are required to do. 
the two attacking mids will eliminate any opportunities for the opposition to play in their number six, while the wing backs will pounce instantly if the ball succeeds in reaching the opposition fullback. When the ball goes left or right, the strikers are the first to press, followed by supporting movements of both central midfielders and the near side wing back, creating a diamond shape, the perfect shape for pressing. Inter maintain a similar high press when the opposition are in the defensive third, with the wing backs and strikers the key figureheads. This method of pressing is particularly effective in force and long balls, which Inter's back three can easily then recover. Inter's 3-5-2 will become a 5-3-2 during lengthy spells without the ball and will look to remain compact to keep their defensive shape. But Inter are a pressing side who like to start the engagement high with a man-orientated press. They protect their central areas and force the opponents out wide which then often triggers their press. The midfielders are key. Marcelo Brozovic has quietly become one of the most accomplished defensive midfielders in the modern game. Throughout his time at Inter Milan, his role has always been a bit understated and perhaps at times been overshadowed. However, Brozovic should be Conte's first name on the team sheet every single game, due to his extremely important role at the base of the midfield triangle. With Brozovic's tactical awareness and overall energy, Vidal has been useful in winning the ball for the side, completing 2.5 tackles per 90, the most in the side. Nicolo Barella often operates in the half space and is the driving force in the midfield triangle and neither Vidal nor Barella are afraid of shooting. This midfield triangle has been integral to Conte's success so far at Inter and whatever format he wishes to play them in, he should feel comfortable knowing that they will succeed. But it's not just the central midfielders that are important, it's also the wingbacks. Another key to Inter Milan's success this season has been their ability to overload in wide areas and utilise their wingbacks to their success. This has been a key theme for Conte's units wherever he's gone. In attacking phases, the wingbacks maintain their width and stretch play as wide as they can. They are often utilised as outlets and if the ball carrying wingbacks get closed down and can't advance any further, they will often work the ball into central midfield and the strikers to switch the play to the other side. Key to this pattern of play has also been the shifting of the central midfielder to the side of the ball to overload one area. If Inter can do this effectively while maintaining width on the other side, they can completely free up the space on that side for a quick switch of play. In defensive transitions, the wingbacks have all shown their incredible fitness levels, often being required to take up positions as the outside defenders in the back five. Often they both do this at the same time, creating a very organised line of five players acting as a wall for the opposition to get past. This is perhaps a key reason why Inter have a very good defensive record so far this season. Their defensive organisation has been incredible, led by the dropping movements of their wing backs out of possession, back in possession, it would be hard to find a more critical pairing than the whip than the wing backs can offer. But that wraps up this tactical analyst. Credit to the mastermind, be sure to check out their articles and their links will be in the description. But for now, we are now going to go into Football Manager to look at the tactic. We're going to look at the training schedules and then the results before we wrap up this video. So now let's head over to Football Manager. So here we are, RDS Conte, the godfather 352 for Inter Milan in Football Manager 2021. So we're going to go through the player instructions and the team instructions before going to the training and then the results. The keeper is a super keeper on the defend duty. The back three, the two wide defenders are ball playing defenders. They are instructed to pass it shorter and stay wider, trying to stretch the play. In between them is the central defender where Deep Fry will often play. You could change it to a cover or even use a libero, but in all honesty, I did get better results using all three defenders simply on the defend duty. On the flanks, we have two wing backs who are on the attacking duty. The left wing back is instructed to take fewer risks and shoot less often. He's going to be an attacking full back just like the right one, but trying to tone down his attacking, his direct play just a little bit. So for the left back, we have take fewer risk and shoot less often but for the right back he has no instructions. In central midfield for our Marcelo Brozovic role we are using the deep line playmaker on the defend duty. He is instructed to pass it shorter trying to keep possession trying to maintain it and also mark tighter. For the deep line playmaker you can also add take more risk to 
try and play the more direct ball or to try and break the line but when I did use that instruction I did notice his pass percentage went down and it did affect our build up play which is why I'm not using take more risk or even more direct passing. In central midfield we have the ball winning midfielder where Arturo Vidal would be, he is instructed to stay wider in possession and that can help us with our overload on each flank because then his central midfield partner is the Mazala who is already instructed to stay wider, he of course then will help out the wing back on the attack duty down on the right hand side. So, so what we are hoping that both wing backs can basically ball carry the ball further up the pitch and both central midfielders can then operate in wider areas trying to cause an overload and then the wing back can play the ball back in central midfield to then do the switch play. Up top we do have a target man on the support duty, if you don't have a target man you can then use a pressing forward on the support duty. But he is a target man on the support duty, he's instructed to take more risk, close down more and mark tighter. His partner would be Martinez, so of course Lukaku would be the target man, Martinez would be the pressing forward on the attack duty. His only instruction is to pass it shorter. Those are the player instructions and the roles we are now going to look at the team instructions. For the mentality we are using positive, that is kind of a default instruction for me to be honest. For the attacking width we are using wide, the approach play, pass into space to try and aid our counter attacks. We do have overlap on the right and overlap on the left. People are going to be wondering why because we have no wingers so who are they going to be overlapping? Well, when the central midfielders come out wider, they are the players that they will be overlapping. We are going to be using play out of the defence, the passing directness and the tempo is set to standard so basically it will be tied with the team mentality. The team mentality is on positive so by default the passing directness is on standard and the tempo is on slightly higher. In the final third we are using mixed crosses and work ball into the box simply because Inter Milan have the shortest shot distance in the Serie A so far. I believe Conte's team likes shooting from distance but in the Serie A they actually have the lowest shot distance. In transition when the possession has been lost we are going to be regrouping, getting back into our defensive positioning and when possession has been won we are going to make our counter movements to try and be that counter attacking side. When the goalkeeper is in possession he will distribute it to the centre backs. For out of possession, we have a higher line of engagement, the higher defence line, the narrow defensive width, more urgent pressing intensity and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. When you are playing against a stronger side, you can drop your defence line down to standard, but I really wouldn't go any lower than standard, I really wouldn't. But that wraps up the team instructions, but we are now going to look at some of the training schedules. So when we have one match during the week, on the Monday it's all about the teamwork, defending, disengaged and team bonding. On Tuesday we are going to be practicing our pressing and our attacking direct play, also our attacking corners. On the Wednesday it's chance creation and match practice, Thursday attacking movement, defensive shape and just the general attacking schedule. On the Friday is teamwork, before the match on the Saturday, the Sunday we recover and then do our match preview. When there are two matches during the week is very similar, of course the only difference being is that on Wednesday there is going to be a match. But that's the training schedules, I will advise you to use them because that's exactly what I did in this test, I used them throughout the season and that is how I achieved the results that I am going to show you right now. So here we can see in the Serie A we are the champions, we played 38, we won 28, we drew 8 and lost 2 with a goal difference of plus 57, the best in the league and with the 92 points tally. In the Champions League we reached the semi-final which is very good, our board expectation is reached the first knockout round at least so of course we smashed our board expectation. In the Italian Cup though we didn't reach the board expectation, we expected to reach the final but we got knocked out by Zebre Juve once again. Juve were kind of our bogey team in the cup competitions and also in the league as we did lose 4-1 away to them. We also lost 3-2 away to Napoli and those were our two away defeats. But for the average possession we finished ninth with 50%, we scored the second most goals in the league with 72 goals, for expected goals for we also came in second but we did score the most goals from corners, we managed to score 10 from corners, when it comes to passes completed we are ranked 15th so not very high at all but we did create the most clear cut chances in the season creating 37 clear cut chances. 
Shots for we weren't the most attacking or most offensive side. We had Juve above us and we also had AC Milan above us. Dribbles made similar. Because we aren't really running at defence much, it's really only our two wing backs, which is why we are ranked 7th in that. But when it comes to the defensive stats, you can see conceded, we are top of the table. We didn't concede a goal from a corner all season and we had the most clean sheets, 28. That's five more than the team that came in second. The top goal scorer in the league was Ronaldo, but Martinez came in second with 27 goals and Lukaku came in fourth with 15 goals. So we had two of our strikers in the top five goal scorers in the Serie A. Stefano Sensi, who often played as a Mazzala for me, for some reason I find him better or more effective than Nico Barella and you can see this here with 114 key passes from Stefano Sensi. For the most dribbles made as well we can see why Hakimi is so important, 44 dribbles made throughout the season and that ranks him third in the league. For the goals, how do we score most of our goals, 43 from play shots, 19 from headers, 6 from penalties and 4 from the powerful shots. When it comes to the assist, 19 came from crosses which was the most and 18 came from three balls which is very close to crossing. Of course then you would need some very good crosses on each flanks and you need some very good passers in central midfield. So in the squad who are the top goal scorers? Martinez with 35 goals in all competitions, Romelu Lukaku with 22 goals in all competitions so so with two very good strikers, you are going to score plenty of goals with your strikers. But that wraps up this video, unfortunately. My name is RDF and it has been a pleasure recording this video for you. It has been a pleasure showing you this Antonio Conte analyst. Make sure if you are new or you haven't yet, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. Also, if you have any recommendations, make sure you leave that in the comment section. I will see you soon. Peace out. Shout out to all my Patreons. I love you guys. See ya.